Part four, chapter thirteen of Short History of the Christian Church by John Fletcher Hurst. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter thirteen Arminius and the Synod of Dort. Holland became an important scene of theological activity. No more certain was the flow of the Rhine from Basel to the sea than was the theological current from Geneva to the Netherlands calvin ruled as thoroughly the theology at the mouth of the rhine as on the shore of lake geneva but there arose among the dutch strong evidences of divergence during the last thirty years of the sixteenth century there were decided premonitory symptoms of an approaching storm james arminius headed the reaction against extreme calvinism he was born in fifteen sixty studied theology under beza at geneva and returned as preacher at amsterdam he became professor at the new university of leyden where he came into controversy with gomerus gomerus represented the calvinistic theology while arminius opposed election and gave a large place to the operation of the human will soon the entire country was involved in the controversy the armenians and the gomerists divided the church and the country between themselves theological terminology was bandied about with amazing zeal the quiet dutch burgher talked theology with as much ease as he rode his boat or watched his windmill or smoked his pipe after the death of the powerful disputants the animosity lost none of its heat it was now not a question of the university or the quiet homes within the dikes but of the states general the terms arminians and gomerists were now too limited they disappeared beneath the broader ones of remonstrance and contra remonstrance the arminians were charged with being disturbers of the public peace they presented to the states general a protest against the five articles of the gomerists which had been passed for their acceptance whiten bogart and episcopius after the death of arminius stood at the head of the remonstrants and fought their battle bravely the states-general ordered a discussion of the points at issue in sixteen thirteen but the effort at conference was fruitless the field of politics was now invaded by the rival parties maurice of nassau thought he saw that by identifying himself with the contra remonstrants he could gain supreme power the remonstrants saw very early his ambitious designs and opposed him with all their power john olden barneveld and hugo grotius opposed him but they failed the former being executed and the latter imprisoned it was now a question of suppressing the remonstrants they had strength among the people but the whole machinery of the government was turned against them the contra remonstrants saw that the day of peace was still far distant they therefore succeeded in calling a synod through which it was hoped the armenian theology might at last be put to rest for ever the remonstrants were at a disadvantage from the very start and were summoned as defendants they were denied seats in the council and were treated throughout as accused parties the synod began november thirteenth sixteen eighteen and continued until may tenth sixteen nineteen holding one hundred and eighty sessions the main point at issue election was not permitted to be discussed at all the most able reformed theologians of europe were in attendance fifty-eight from holland twenty-eight from england and scotland and others from the palatinate hesse nassau switzerland east friesland and bremen episcopius represented the remonstrants at the twenty-second session he with twelve others appeared by request to defend their tenets he gave an eloquent and vigorous address explaining the remonstrant positions a protracted discussion followed continuing to the fifty-seventh session the remonstrants being all the time excluded from the floor the contra remonstrants were victorious the result was that the government abided by the decision of the synod when the remonstrants were condemned and banished from the country 
under henry frederick however the successor of maurice milder measures were adopted but the dutch theology remained strongly reformed End of chapter 13